The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene, and you are listening to Durian ASEAN. Today, I'm going to interview Miss Didi Mahmoud. She is a multi-award-winning international health and fitness expert. She'll be talking about not just exercise but also food, with the title today: "Exercise is medicine, food is pharmacy." First of all, I want to say welcome to Durian ASEAN. Uh, thank you, Arlene, and thank you for having me uh, here today. I'm so glad to have you, especially talking about things that a lot of Malaysians and I guess in Southeast Asia are concerned about nowadays, which is about health and fitness. Oh yes, and definitely. Food. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. I mean, thinking about the uh, the rate, the statistics on obesity. Mm-hmm. I think obesity is really, really um, you know high in numbers nowadays, particularly you know where we are um, in in Malaysia, right? I think uh, you. You know, uh, Malaysia last year was, um, you know, the the fattest country, if, my, if I may say, okay, <laughs> in Southeast Asia. All right, but uh, this year, okay, Brunei has taken over as the fattest country in Southeast Asia. But yet again, okay, <laughs> do not rest on um, on our laurels, right? Because okay, uh, Putrajaya is known to have uh, a very high density of obese. Um, oh, really? You know, yeah. Uh, of obese employees, <laughs> yeah. So I think I think that is really worrying, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is definitely a worrying trend. Especially you have civil servants; they're supposed to be the one in uh, implementing as well as making our policies. Yes. But um, I mean, before we go further, talking about uh, topics that is definitely something that a lot of Malaysians and uh, Southeast Asians want to know. I want to go back to your background. So you say that you are an award-winning international health and and fitness expert. Tell me about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a, a mouthful for me to mention. <laughs> okay, basically right now, okay, uh, I'm a consultant with University of Malaya. Okay, um, okay, I'm also an adjunct um, with the Edith Cowan University in Australia. And then also, I'm also the Reebok Fitness Ambassador. And then I'm also the Blue Cap uh, Movement okay, uh, Ambassador um, for Cancer Awareness as well. And then uh, I'm also the uh, Singapore Heart Foundation uh, Health Ambassador. So that's uh, some of the uh, things that I'm rooting for and promoting. And uh, yeah, and and on top of that, um, I think most importantly is I'm I'm promoting health. Okay, um, I think uh, you 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 will know, but maybe the listeners might not know that I used to be obese before I had medical conditions, problems before because of my obesity, and it affected my health and all. That. So most of the time, I'm like thinking about like losing weight and all that. But I think right now, okay, although we have the obesity uh, epidemic and pandemic and all that, right? Right now, I think what is important is that we need to change our, um, you know, our focus. You know, we, mm-hmm. we have to uh, realign our focus instead of saying, I want to lose weight. All right. We must say that we must regain health. Mm-hmm. Because when we talk about health, okay, the definition of health is actually not just absence of diseases. So if I'm not, uh, you know, if I don't have any illness, that means, yeah, I'm healthy. Is that correct? No, I think health is actually, the definition of health would have to be an all-encompassing. Meaning it has to be uh, healthy uh, in terms of positive uh, fitness, uh, uh, positive physical health. Okay, and then that means uh, apart from being, uh, you know, absence of diseases, you also have to be absent from, uh, you know, injuries and all that, right? Yeah. And then again, uh, spiritual, you know, uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, emotionally, you know, all this, you know, it so has to be not- health. It's not easy to be healthy. Yeah, it, <laughs> it looks is like not. It you is have not, to yeah. be like healthy in all senses. <laughs> yes, it is not easy, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Right. Uh, on the first uh, segment of our discussion, we want to focus on exercise first, uh, and then we will move on to food, and eventually we will try to look at a bigger picture and see maybe we should do some kind of behavioral change in our society in order to accomplish uh, health in terms of exercise and in terms of food. So the first uh, segment talking about exercise is medicine. Why 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 don't I just take medicine? Why I do why exercise is better than that? Okay. Uh that's a very very good question because again, okay, in Malaysia, in Singapore, I conduct exercise classes and all that. And then, you know, there are myths that goes around, you know, particularly amongst, you know, certain communities that says that 
oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to take medication. Like example, you know, I've got like, uh, you know, some uh, people coming up to me and say, oh, I've got, I've got high blood pressure. So, uh, Didi, I don't want to take medication because if I take medication, it will stay with me until I die, you know. So, I do not want to start taking medication. Now, that's where the danger is. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you have high blood pressure, all right, if you have hypertension, that is. All right, even when we are sitting down like this, you and me might have normal blood pressure, right? But a person who has hypertension might have, a, you know, a raised blood pressure. Even though the person is sitting down. Yes, that's wow. true. And then if, if uh, okay, let's say a, a person from comes from behind and, you know, and say, hey, hi, you know, <laughs> and you got a shock and your blood pressure will, will increase, right? Uh -huh. You know, uh, suddenly. And that might, you know, uh, you know, in the most, uh, you know, extreme case, would, would cause you to, you know, have a, you know, a massive stroke or heart attack or something, you know, because you got a shock, right? So because your, your blood pressure goes up, you see? So again, I always tell, uh, you know, everybody who has hypertension, I said, please take your medication. That will control your medical condition. But, okay, of course, obviously, right, you take the medication it might be for life. But again, you can only, okay, get well from your blood hypertension by exercising and looking after your diet. Okay, so this, uh, this happens like this, okay. If you're taking medication, you control your blood pressure level. All right. So basically, you know, like you, you, you don't have a high risk of getting, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, jolted to, you know, like uh, maybe a person gives you a scare or something like that, you know. So the, the risk of, you know, those kind of things happening will be lessened, right? So again, okay, once you take medication, it will control your blood pressure. But you notice for those people who's not looking after their food or who's not looking after the exercise regime, okay, if you notice when they go back to the doctor, after so many years, the doctor will actually add on and add on and add on So you keep medication. on consuming medication yes. your whole life. That's true. But then, if you take medication, you control your medical condition, but you look after your, your, exercise. your exercise, you look after your food, okay? When you go back to the doctor, the doctor will say, hey, you know, you've been doing something about your, your health, okay? And then, you, you know, you're registering very good, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I will lessen the dosage for you, you know? Now, this uh, comes uh, through a, a research I've done. I've done research uh, in, uh, for Nanyang Technological University back in 2000, okay? Uh, that was a, a part where I wanted to see, like, uh, whether even walking actually has um, an effect on health. Does it? Yes, it has, okay? Uh, uh, now, if you do the, what the kind proper, of walk? the power walk, <laughs> the, the power, power walk, the brisk okay. walk, yes, the brisk walk. All right, and then that one. Uh, when I did the the research, I actually strapped you know heart rate monitors on them, and then after that, I actually did um, you know exercise with um, you know dumbbells, you know, because okay, American College of Sports Medicine. Okay, the world renowned uh, um, you know um, uh, uh, organization on physical activity who gives the guidelines of physical activity says that. If you are of normal population, that means no medical conditions or no weight problems whatsoever, you need to exercise 150 minutes per week. Wow. All right. But if you have medical conditions or if you have an obesity problems or weight management problems, you need to exercise between 240 minutes to 218 minutes per week, all right, in order to get better. You see, so they have actually proven that exercise is medicine. Now, coming back to my uh, research with uh, uh, in Singapore, right? Um, that one, I've, uh, I actually uh, exercised with them for about six months, okay, three times a week and all that. Initially, when uh, we actually, uh, when they actually went, the subjects, right? When they actually went for um, medical, uh, you know, like uh, venous blood, you know, drawing of their v v venous blood. So, do you know that half of the test tube contains the yellowish uh, you know things that you see under uh, the skin of a chicken oh really yeah half of it you know and that is the very bad you know uh, you know cholesterol and all that you see that's you know because they're obese and that's what's happening in their in their body you know and these are the people who might suffer from heart attacks but do you think stroke. through exercise you can reduce the amount of fat yes or? definitely Okay, in six months uh, after that, they actually, um, you know, uh, they actually showed, okay, initially when they come in, okay, blood pressure was a problem. Okay, most of them, most of them had problems with um, uh, blood glucose level, almost borderline, uh, you know, uh, diabetic. And then they have uh, um, problems with hypertension. And then, uh, you know, cholesterol level is really going through the roof. 
But then after six months, they actually showed that not only do they lose their weight, but they actually improve in all their health parameters. Wow. Now, not only that, that was back in 2000, right? Okay, just in April this year, um, you know, I, I conducted a, a research um, under the, you know, uh, under University of Malaya, supported by University of Singapore, National University of Singapore. Okay, it's for obese ladies in Singapore. Okay, now uh, that one, okay, um, I, I took all the obese ladies, all right, and then uh, exercised with them for about three months. Okay, and then uh, again, uh, they, they show, okay, what I actually uh, looked at was their um, fitness level, mm -hmm. their blood lipid parameters, and also their body composition. All right, uh, now initially they came in obese. All right. At the end of three months, just three months. Just okay. three months. Just three months. Okay. And then uh, this is I, every day, right? Uh, this is no. This is only three times a week. Oh wow! All right. And then uh, they only did it for about less than an hour. Uh -huh. And then uh, why I, I did the 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 study was uh, because I wanted to see because you see uh, being obese myself last time right I hated exercise. No one likes it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you're skinny. <laughs> I used to be at 90 kilograms before at 40 BMI. Right now, I'm, I'm about 49 kilos. Right? I'm in my healthy weight. But that time when I was 90, I, I, I know the problems of a person with uh, uh, an obese problems. You know, obesity problems. You see, number one, I, particularly myself, I hate exercise because it's such a chore. You know, I have knee problems because of my big, uh, you know, big size and heavy weight. You know, and I say I hated exercise because it puts me through a lot of discomfort. You know, it's very painful on my knees and all that. So my question, my research question that time, okay, just recently, um, okay, was like, can, can, can a person obese, you know, do, uh, um, you know, uh, short exercises and still lose a lot of weight? You and know? what's the finding? Okay. And the finding is that, yay! Really? Yeah, yeah. So, three times a week. Okay, three for, times a week. For the for, next three months. Yeah, for the three months. And then less than even an hour. And then uh, part of it is uh, my chest stretches, which I will share with you so that you can upload up on uh, Duran ASEAN uh, Facebook, right? Um, you know? And then on top of that, I did a high-intensity exercise. Yes, obese people can do high-intensity exercise. So basically, I showed, uh, you know, my, my research showed that dosage-related exercise works. And not only that, I actually also studied on the effects of music, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous music, or whether non-music actually works in spurring you on for you to lose more weight. And the results of my finding is... Okay, this will be very interesting, you know. You know, we always think that, okay, with music, right? We always run, you know, and yeah. then we have music playing in our ears, you yeah. know, with, uh, you know, uh, listening on, on our, you know, mobile phones and all that, right? Okay, and we always think that, yeah, music spurs me on for me to do more. Okay, the surprising finding of my research, okay, high-intensity research on overweight, uh, on obese women in Singapore shows that at high intensity, the music doesn't have any effect. Wow. So whether it's synchronized music or asynchronous music or no music at all, the high intensity uh, exercise actually takes over everything. That means basically you are in the zone mm -hmm. concentrating on your high intensity uh, you know, exercise. And the, the findings shows positive uh, in all three aspects, meaning body composition, meaning BMI drop, you know, and then uh, weight drop. Okay, um, um, waist, okay, they lost so many inches, you know. And then um, on, on top of that, in fitness, they actually uh, increase in fitness from day one to day, uh, you know, the last day of the three months, right? Wow. So they actually increase in fitness. And not only that, their cholesterol level, all right, their cholesterol level improved. That means, in other words, their bad cholesterol, LDL, dropped and their HDL, HDL is high density lipoprotein actually improve because of their high intensity uh, exercises. Wow, that's so amazing. That's a great finding. I think you and should think, continue doing this kind of finding. Oh my gosh, mm. yeah. I think the thing is that, okay, this, uh, this research, right? Uh, you know, the findings has been presented uh, as part of the, um, you know, I, I was one of the, this is uh, the only Asian research selected. Uh, by the American College of Sports Medicine, uh, you know it was it was presented in the American College of Sports Medicine uh, Northwest Chapter Annual Meeting in April and uh, under the President Cup Award. Wow! You know, so um, you know they 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 chose this. Um, you know, they chose this research. Uh, they chose my research because of its impact. 
on obesity in Asia. Mm. And I think this would definitely help you know Asian society to understand further on how to uh, tackle the issue of obesity. Unfortunately, this is the end of our first segment. We will continue the second segment talking more about things that Asian love doing, which is food. <laughs> The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hi, this is Arlene. You're back with me again on Durian ASEAN. Together with me is Didi Mahmood, a multi-award-winning international health and fitness expert. And she'll be talking about exercise is medicine and food is pharmacy. So, hi Mahmood. Uh, sorry, Didi Mahmood. <laughs> Hi, Arlene. So earlier on, we discussed extensively on exercise and the benefit of it. Uh, but what about food? You know, when you think about food, yeah, instantly, you know, it. Uh, you think about all the high calorie food, <laughs> high fat, and high sodium, especially in Southeast Asia and in Asia. Right. Um. So how can food be a pharmacy? Okay. Actually, right, um, one, one of the things is uh, when, when we talk about food, right, we always think like healthy food is like so bland and not tasty and all that, right? Salad. Yes. <laughs> without the like, dressing. Oh, yes, yes, without the dressing. I mean, um, and as a person who had actually, you know, I, I've gone through obesity, I've gone through some medical problems when I was that, you know, when I had that obesity problems before. Okay, one of the things uh, myself as a nutritionist, right, okay, I was thinking like, Hey, I mean, uh, if you think about it, uh, like if you want to control your food, like, okay, you don't eat this or you don't eat that, you don't eat anything except salad and no dressing, you know, life is going to be very upsetting and very miserable and all that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what I do is that, okay, at the moment, okay, I um, okay, I have a program that's called um, a Fat to Fit in Singapore and Malaysia. Okay, uh, and then even in University of Malaya, okay, uh, fat to fit. So uh, I took uh, people who have uh, medical conditions, who has, uh, you know, um, you know, obesity problems, okay. I, I take them with me, I bring them through exercise, but again, I will teach them how to uh, look after their diet, okay. And when we talk about diet, okay, it doesn't mean, uh, you know, extreme caloric uh, deficit diet, mm -hmm. okay. What I want everybody to do is eat, Okay, I know, right? <laughs> uh, when we talk about that, you know, that's why I said, you no, know, people love me because I tell them to eat, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love to eat when you're in Asia? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You know, I mean, Asia is where you find good food, right? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so the thing is that how to eat, you have to eat. Very simple is that you have to, you know, every time when you, you sit down to eat or when you want to eat something, okay, at your three main meals, right? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. You just or, have to divide. Or in, in in Malaysia, it will be a six meal. <laughs> oh, yeah. And for me, I encourage six meals eater. Uh, really? Yeah, I do. Right, I do. Because I think, number one, you have to eat uh, you know, regularly. You can eat up to four to six meals a day regularly because once, once you eat regularly, okay, your um, insulin level, you know, uh, your blood sugar level stays consistent. And that's mm -hmm. where you keep up your alertness mm -hmm. you know so right now we must think about you know just now we were talking about exercise is medicine you know um initial part of uh, my introduction is said i said we must think about regaining health now food is also about regaining health food is not only about regaining health but it is also about improving your performance mm -hmm. you know because only with food and exercise together, okay, you can increase your performance, okay, in everything that you do, all right? Number one, okay, how do you eat? Breakfast is a must. Remember, the adage, okay, breakfast like a king, right? Mm. Um, you know, lunch like a prince. I, I have no idea. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the name. You all actually right? call that. All right, okay. Breakfast like a king, uh, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper, they say. Ah, okay. So you must you must go at least, you know, with your three main meals. And then for me, I will say, uh, um, you know, snack like somebody happy, you know. Ah, okay. <laughs> snack like a happy person, you know, I will say. Okay, so at least you must have at least five or six meals, like I say. Okay, how do you eat that? Okay, breakfast. You must have your breakfast because uh, when you have your sleep, your body, you know, there's nothing 
there's is is very empty in your tummy. So you are literally fasting. Yeah, you are literally <laughs> fasting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what happens when a person fast? Okay, they need to break their fast in order to increase their metabolism rate. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, people wants to look up to their weight or something like that and say, "Oh, I don't want to have my breakfast because I just want to eat during lunch." Mm-hmm. And what happens is that the body signals this as, "Wow, you know, there's no food." So when the when the body when the when the brain says that there's no food, it goes into a panic level, you know, uh, a panic situation whereby it doesn't want to burn, you know, your calories because it wants you it wants you to stay alive for survival. Yeah. You know, that's the natural way that your body, uh, you know, adapts you to survival. So adaptation. you're actually making yourself fatter by not eating. <laughs> yes. You actually by not eating, all right, by not eating your breakfast, number one, or by not eating your enough calories, okay? For women, you need to eat at least about 1,500 calories per day. Okay, for nursing mothers, you have to eat about at least 1,800 calories per day. For men, you have to eat about 1,800 to 2,400 calories per day. Okay, that is, uh, you know, depending, okay, depending on your activity level, of course. So, if you don't hit that numbers, okay, even people who want to lose weight, they, they actually must eat at least 1,000 to 1,200 to 1,300 calories per day. So, every time they hit lower than that, 1,200 calories per day, okay, their body goes into a shock and their body refuses to burn, you know, like, uh, you know, like basically your body goes into a sluggish situation. So the next meal you take in, the body will start, you know, uh, you know, storing it, store, store, store. So you will increase the amount, I guess the fel- uh, fat cells, is uh, it? Yeah, I mean, very easy for them to actually store it and refuse to burn. So basically, what happens to people who goes on diet after diet mm-hmm. is that they make their metabolism burning rate sluggish, uh-huh. and then okay, once like you know, uh, once they start eating properly, or maybe they start eating their third meal or something, okay, their body will start storing, and that's where people you know uh, starts putting on weight again. We gain weight, mm-hmm. and then it's very difficult for them to lose weight. You know, mm-hmm. that's you know the the key to losing weight is to have your three meals or four meals or five meals a day, and of course you can't eat that much. You know, at one sitting, right? So if you space it out, your your brain will thank you for it, mm-hmm. your energy level will thank you for it. Yeah, you know, and then basically, and then again, food is pharmacy is that uh, a lot of people take supplements without looking at their food intake, but if you look at your food intake. Okay, uh, you must have your carbohydrates, you must have your proteins, you must have your fats, good fat that is. All right, if you look at this food intake, that is your vitamins that you can take. So you don't actually need supplements. So basically, if you eat well, okay, you basically do not need to have a lot of supplements. Okay, the only reason, okay, let's let's put it this way. What you need to eat, okay, is actually your carbohydrates. Okay, your carbohydrate has to be complex carbohydrates, right? Because that will keep your blood sugar level stable. Mm-hmm. Right now, uh, let's talk about like cakes and you know and 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 uh, cookies and all those. Okay, that one will give you a very great sugar surge, and then it makes you. It, it's almost like ingesting coffee. Uh, you know, initially okay. it gives you the high, and then after a while you get very tired. You need the next coffee, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. You see, and then do you know that when you ingest too much, when you consume too much sugar, sugary stuff, and all that, that's what happens. It goes. Sugar, you know, that's why you notice that if if you you try experimenting with the kids, yeah. you give them a a you know, lollipop, they run around the house. Yeah. After a while, they they fall very, you know, they they they, they will get feel, so tired. Yeah, they get so tired. They can they can even sleep, right? Yeah. That's what happens to our, our brain. You see, yeah. and again, uh, people in that kind of situation. Okay, uh, will actually need more sugar and more sugar and more sugar. So it's like a never-ending. So it's ending. really unhealthy. Yeah, it's a really spiraling out of control, you know. Yeah. So again, another thing is that what you need to do is, um, you know, implement, uh, you know, in the food, you need to take whole meal, whole grain. These are all your magic words, mm-hmm. you know, because these are the complex carbohydrates that gives you fiber. It makes you, you know, it controls your cholesterol level, mm-hmm. you know. But do you, do you think uh, food in Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. is it healthy? Okay, actually food everywhere, okay, even Western diet, uh, you know, um, there are healthy and non-healthy food. 
So what is the healthier version of so Do you think nasi lemak is healthy? Okay, I mean, uh, I would say nasi lemak can be healthy. Okay, if we if we substitute, let's say the egg, you know, instead of having it like a fried egg, you can have a hard a boiled hard boil, egg. Uh, okay. Right now, that hard boiled egg is your protein, which you actually need when you exercise. It's for protein recovery. It's for you know your muscle uh, building, yeah, muscle building food. It's like your cell building food. You know, every time your cell you know gets torn or something like that from the activities you do, mm-hmm. you know, you need to have your protein to actually recover yeah. right so that's it so actually mm-hmm. southeast asian food can be healthy if we substitute uh like as like say fried stuff to mm-hmm. something uh, to a healthier version right for a healthier version like example if you want to do uh you know um, okay put it this way we have like uh like your me uh, goreng, you know, me me goreng or yeah. something like that. Okay, put more veggie in that, and then after that, you know, uh, put healthier stuff inside there. Okay, if you really must have a me goreng, but again, you can have your me soup. Perhaps you mm-hmm. know, it's more, uh, it's less little than your me goreng. Anything mm-hmm. that's fried. Okay, very easy. Uh, rule of the thumb is that if you want to look after your weight, if you want to look after your health, less of fried food. Okay, uh, if you still cannot let go of your fried food, okay, maybe stir fried. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, that's of lesser evil than your you know really uh, food with oily you know uh, uh, you know put inside oily frying you know <laughs> right yeah uh, that's one okay another thing is that okay think about uh, substituting right okay example chicken rice you know, you have a very high calorie because uh, actually, if you think about it, chicken rice, if you have, instead of the fried chicken, you can have... Uh, steam you know, chicken. Steam chicken. Yeah. Okay, but again, you might think about it. Okay, the, the why, why is it still very high in calories? Because it can come up to about 500, 600 calories as in chicken rice, even in steam. Okay, oh, chicken okay. rice. Why? Because of the rice. Mm-hmm. Because the rice has been, you know, with the 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 chicken broth, right? Mm-hmm. And chicken broth, uh, you know, they put like all the skin inside there, yeah. and that's your fatty things, right? So what you can do is that substitute even the rice with half of the rice. Maybe you can put white rice. That's true. You know, so you know it is how you go and enjoy life, substituting and still having, you know, the 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 good food to eat and all that, you know. But most important is that every time, you know, when you actually. Uh, put food into your mouth, I think uh, eventually you must ask yourself, is this good for me? Is this helping my performance? Is this helping my health? You know, I, again, fat is not all bad. There are good fats. Right, you think about it, you have, uh, you know, fish, uh, white fish, right? Like uh, salmon, tuna, sardines. These are all very good proteins. They give you omega-6, omega-3, you know, good for heart health and all that, you know. So there you go, you know, you have very good food even in in asia you know you have you have like what i mean there's sushi yeah. there's you know there's um, you know noodles in in you know in nice uh, clear broth right yeah. so if you have noodles that's like you know on top of it swimming with fat and all that what you need to do is just remove the top layer so it's just a, to be a bit more I, I guess to be a bit more smart about our yeah. food yeah and that's the end of what food is all about yeah. enjoying food yeah anyway uh, mm-hmm. this is the end of our second segment it's really nice talking about food and makes me hungry now <laughs> But at the next one, we'll talk more about the behavioral change that we need to have mm-hmm. in order for Asian society to get rid of obesity. Right. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. You're back with me on Durian ASEAN. So you're still with Didi Mahmood, a multi-award-winning international health and fitness expert, where early on she discussed about exercise is medicine and food is pharmacy. And of course, uh, uh, exercise and food uh, alone won't help if we do not change uh, our mindset on uh, adopting a more healthier uh uh, lifestyle and in this case I would like to uh, go back to Didi Mahmud so when it comes to behavioral change uh, in our society what kind of change is really needed 
Okay, I would like to, uh, you know, highlight again mm-hmm. uh, the research that I did for my PhD, mm-hmm. right? Uh, okay, what happens is that I take the subjects and then put them through exercise and then, uh, you know, I, I teach them how to look after their exercise and then also, you know, also they are very more aware of their food and all that. And then at the end of the three months when they, you know, initially these are obese people, yeah, they have not been exercising at all. But after the three months, okay, even until now, all right, which is um, almost about, I think more than more than coming to a year or something like that. They are actually continuing the healthy lifestyle without you, without me. <laughs> you see, so it is so possible, they are, and they are not doing this for you. <laughs> yes, you see, they are actually doing it for themselves. So again, I I think uh, one of the things is that okay, when we're talking about behavioral change, I think most importantly, what I'm trying to get out into uh, the public, right, is actually uh, the focus on regaining health. Mm. You know, uh, I think we if we change the mantra a little bit on you know rather than I want to lose weight. Think about I want to regain health. Uh-huh. You know, that's, that's, one. that's a really important mindset because uh, I remember reading this one uh, article about uh, the participants of uh, Big Loser, mm-hmm, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, majority of them uh, regain their weight mm-hmm. after the show ends. Right. Yes, yeah. yes. That's true. That's very, very true. In fact, what happens is that, um, you know, um, I think very important okay my fat to fit uh, is a program that i actually spearheaded uh, in rtm and then after it was um, you know i did a, a season 4 already in singapore and we are into season 3 in university malaya and these are the people that actually exercise with me and then uh, you know i teach them how to look after their food and then basically you know implement some behavioral changes and all that and within 3 months they actually lost 25 kilos in a healthy way no uh, no medication, just uh, purely exercise and uh, tr- just to the normal everyday food that they eat. Oh. And then at the end of it, these are the people that, you know, apart from losing 25 kilos in a healthy way, even until now, they are still uh, persevering, uh, continuing their health health journey by exercising regularly. Now, uh, one of the things I do is, you know, uh, going into their psychology. Okay, not only, okay, sometimes you think about it, you know, everything is about awareness, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, awareness about health and all that, awareness about, uh, you know, uh, okay, we we need to uh, not be aware, oh, okay, if you want to lose weight, okay, we are aware that, you know, this food, you know, makes us fat or, you know, we need to exercise now. How many people we know know that? That's true. Yeah, yeah, exercise, yeah, we need to exercise, but how many people are doing it? Yeah. You know what I mean? So basically, okay, awareness is there. You know, awareness is there. But it's like behavior- a smoker. Like, yeah. you know that it's bad for you, but you still smoke. <laughs> yeah, you see? So, I, I, think, I think the most important thing is to know better is to do better. So, once they know, they understand. So, uh, they, they exercise with me. I make them understand why, what, and how they do it. So, the more they understand, the more they are able to be accountable to themselves. So, again, another thing is that most people come to me and say, Didi, please, Lord, give me the motivation. You know what I mean? And then I said, okay, most people will say, okay, please give me motivation. For me, I would say, you got to do something, then motivation will come. Mm. So, in order to look after your health or uh, you know, lose that weight or something like that, just get up, just do five minutes of something. Yeah. You know, just move for five minutes and then once you move for five minutes, okay, I can bet you that will, you will get on to something else and something else okay, and something else. that's the next else. thing that I need to yes. do <laughs> to motivate myself. <laughs> you know, and then another thing as, um, you know, um, okay, as you know, I am also the ambassador uh, for Blue Cap Movement. Okay, this is a cancer uh, awareness for prostate cancer. Mm. You know, we have an event coming on on the prostate sixth. cancer mm-hmm. is for men. For right? men, yeah, for men. All right, uh, on the sixth of November in Malaysia, in uh, in University Malaya. Okay, everybody is welcome. It's at seven thirty. Okay, at University Malaya. Now again, okay, I mean, uh, uh, catching up. Uh, okay, uh, just touching upon uh, what I do with Edith Cowan University. Uh, you know, um, uh, on 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 their research on exercise is cancer. Uh, mm-hmm. exercise and cancer. That is, yeah. How exercise even affect uh, cancer uh, quality of life? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they actually uh, did a landmark study basically on uh, you know uh, exercise. How exercise affects the quality of life, even in uh, cancer patients. Okay, who are undergoing 
who were undergoing chemotherapy. Oh. You know, and these are people even up to 70 years old. Wow. You know, and they have cancer. They went for chemotherapy and actually they uh, they, they, they were exercising even high intensity exercises mm -hmm. and then even when they go through chemotherapy they actually felt better and then they actually improve in health oh wow you know so think about it exercise is truly medicine mm. right and then again uh, uh you know uh, capturing on my uh you know study on obesity right on uh, women and obesity and all all that in singapore uh you know uh that i brought to american college of sports medicine conference right now, even food, even exercise, exercise is truly medicine, you know, and food is pharmacy. So if you look after your food and all that, if you eat like you want to be healthy, you know, think about it. You know, you if you want it, you have to act like you mean it, right? Yeah. Right? If you really want it so bad, you have to act like you mean it. Yeah. Okay? If you think about it, if you want your health so badly, you have to act the part. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if we again, it's a it's a shift in emphasis. I would say that needs that needs to be done in order to have a behavioral change. Mm -hmm. Now again, don't ask for inspiration. You will be inspired when you do something, not the other way around. So it's all about do something. First. Yeah, do something. Yeah, it's but all I, about I I do want to ask. I mm -hmm. mean, some people they do you know, want to do something. But they they also want to know like, okay, how long should I do this in order for me to uh, regain back my either previous weight or be less obese? Uh, what is your advice for people? Okay, I would say that uh, for people who want to look after their weight, even for people with medical conditions, for instance, okay, they need to exercise between 240 minutes to 280 minutes per week, all right? Um, you just got to divide that. So maybe you have half an hour or something like that daily. But then you also must uh, include uh, strength training exercises, meaning you can exercise with the dumbbell or you can go to the gym or you can do, uh, you know, your diner band, you know, something like that. Or even with water bottles, mm -hmm. you know, you can do that. Okay, in repetitions of like maybe 15 mm -hmm. or even 10 in repetitions. What of would happen if mm -hmm. you just exercise, say, running or mm -hmm. jogging without the strength training okay actually uh if you notice right i'm i'm, I'm teaching exercises in singapore i've got the uh, weekend classes uh, every saturdays and sundays the regime there i i uh, in all my four classes i would have a complete full body exercise meaning i will incorporate not only cardiovascular exercises mm -hmm. okay meaning like not even uh, not only about aerobics you know like uh, when we talk about aerobics we talk about even running and jogging and all that but that's only one part of it. You will you will work out uh, perhaps your cardiovascular endurance. That means you are strengthening your heart, your blood vessels, yeah. and all that. But then, uh, and also your your lungs, perhaps. Okay. But then you need to have strength. Okay. Because in life, right, when we talk about health, uh, fitness parameters, right? Uh, what are the five health fitness parameters, right? Health fitness related, mm -hmm. right? Uh, number one is body composition. You need to be in the proper, you know, BMI ideal weight. Okay, that means you you cannot be fat, right? You need to be in a good weight, a healthy weight range. Okay, number two, you need to have your your strength because without strength you cannot perform, right? Okay, number number three is that you need to have your heart strength, which means it's your cardiovascular endurance. Okay, when we talk about strength just now, you need strength to carry some heavy stuff. Okay, that's your cardio. Uh, that's your strength, but if a uh, muscular strength. But if you want to bring your say, maybe if you go to a supermarket or you you carry a heavy stuff and you need to move from point A to point B, that is your muscular endurance. I see. Right. So you you also need need to have that strength. And as, again, you need to have your flexibility. Mm -hmm. You don't have your flexibility, you end up with a lot of aches that's and true. and you know and uh, a lot of delayed onset muscles. Yeah. Muscle soreness the next day or something like that, you know, and and all these are very very important. You need your balance, you need your coordination, right? Because if you don't have balance and coordination, you will fall, right? Easily fall, and that will uh, not not be very good for your bones, you know, because yeah. you end up with fractures. So again, that is your performance related fitness. Yeah. So right? in other words, it's not easy to be healthy. <laughs> yeah. It is not impossible. It's not easy. Actually, uh, if you talk about it, when you say it's not easy, actually it's easy to be. It's easy. It is mm -hmm. easy to be. Uh, to be healthy okay you just okay very easy it's like you just got to start doing something all right you just got to make sure that you do the right thing to get the right results do not 
do the wrong thing hoping for the right results mm. a lot of us wants to lose weight we go on a diet all right a, a calorie deficit diet okay but again like i was mentioning just now is that calorie deficit diet actually uh, makes it harder for <coughs> you to put uh, to to lose your weight makes it easier for you to put on weight mm. you know so back to basics again so eat six times a day but yeah. just uh, choose a healthier alternative option right for... what you need to do is mm-hmm. that uh, have your plate divided into four mm-hmm. okay put your fruits there <coughs> uh-huh. put your fruits in there first mm-hmm. the first quadrant second quadrant put your vegetables in there the third quadrant put your carbohydrates mm-hmm. which means your pasta or your bread or your rice And then the last quadrant, you put in your protein. Mm. If you go there through your meals, you will not go wrong. Yeah, and you will end up le- not obese, mm-hmm. healthy, and maybe look great. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And exercise is medicine. Food is your pharmacy, and you end up being very positive, healthy, and happy. And a slimmer Asian country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Asian society. Anyway, ah, uh, that's all for our discussion today. It is really nice, ah, uh, speaking to you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arlene. It's really been great to be here in Durian ASEAN. <laughs>